think one of the most interesting things uh, for us uh, from a global perspective on climate change is to see the way that uh, opinions are changing uh, around the world and the type of uh, uh, traction uh, that the agenda for climate change uh, and for renewable energy is, uh, is getting uh, around the world today. Uh, there was a very recent uh, uh, poll in the US which uh, the Stanford University was involved in where for the first time in a long time uh, the US public opinion seems to have shifted very dramatically where 77% of respondents are now saying that it is uh, climate change is man-made uh, and it is something uh, that we have to do something about and we want to do something about. And so despite all the politics and uh, the rhetoric that one hears about, uh, especially in US politics, uh, I think that there is a real change here that's taking place. Another very interesting thing is that a few uh, weeks ago, uh, as you know, Germany has been uh, the one which has installed a huge uh, quantity of uh, solar uh, capacity. And just a few weeks ago, over two weekends, uh, Germany was actually able to uh, produce 80% of the requirement of the entire country through solar. And uh, this is an amazing uh, statistics and shows that uh, clearly that if you uh, persist uh, and have the right policies, there's no doubt that a sunny country like India can, uh, can, can actually make a huge difference. One of the things that uh, uh, the related organizations uh, that I've been involved with, especially in the US, has been to close down coal-fired uh, power plants. And uh, this is actually, you know, quite amazing, the amount of traction uh, that, is, uh, that this uh, uh, whole program of closing down coal-fired uh, power plants is gaining. In the US itself, uh, 30 power plants have closed down, coal-fired power plants have closed down. There are another 100 which are going to close down very shortly, and maybe another 200 which are going to be in the process of closing down. Now, this is an amazing statistic uh, that, you know, people are realizing, not just uh, uh, the health hazards, etc., to do with coal, but also realizing that there is a huge opportunity now in terms of the cost of renewables. And uh, so I think that, uh, you know, this process, which has started, of course, in the US, which is uh, in some ways a bellwether, but a very different situation from India, of course, because, you know, they've always had enough uh, uh, capacity. Their problems may be more in distribution and transmission, et cetera, and smart grids. But at the moment, you know, this is a, a real issue today that we are going to uh, face. And so I think the, the eventual aim of all these, uh, both solar on-grid, solar off-grid, of wind, of other hybrid systems, is really going to be to see how we can improve air quality and health. I think this is the, the underlying issue, I think, that one has to recall, uh, remember, uh, when we're talking of uh, renewables. I think health issues, and specifically to do with particulate matters and air quality uh, are extremely important. Recently in China, uh, the US Embassy in Beijing put up a little uh, monitoring station and they went viral because they put it on their Twitter and Facebook page or whatever <coughs> it was, talking about what was the, uh, uh, the, the amount of uh, particulate matter 2.5, which is you know the micron level where the very, very fine particles get into your lung and, and can create all types of issues. And this, uh, you know, became viral in, in China. And everybody started talking about it. The government had to respond. And to the extent where today they have made a request with folded hands to the US uh, embassy in Beijing, please don't publish this data anymore. It's creating a huge problem for us. We're not able to handle this. You know, and this, so I think that, you know, when we talk of these issues, I think we must understand what are the underlying issues behind it. I mean, why do we need, of course, for off-grid solar, we have a very good uh, reason, which is rural development. But even on-grid solar or any other type of uh, renewable energy, 
this, I think, one is, is the most crucial thing that uh, uh, we must uh, uh, keep in mind as we move forward. The World Health Organization only a couple of weeks ago have now changed their nomenclature of cancer-causing substances on diesel fumes. Up till now, they were saying that, for instance, diesel fumes, uh, whether it is from uh, stationary or from uh, moving uh, vehicles, uh, was a factor in causing cancer. Now they have come out clearly and openly to say that it does cause cancer. Now, I think these are the type of issues you know, that I think we must take cognizance on. Uh, they are the larger issues to do with uh, uh, development. They are, the, they, are the, they are the ones which will determine uh, the path of development that we are interested in. And these are the issues really which I think will make the public uh, opinion and the public pressure on change uh, become very strong. And so I think that, uh, uh, you know, I'm, I'm particularly... Uh, pleased and happy to, to participate in, in discussions such as this because I think that at the end of the day, aside from all the technical and economic uh, uh, benefits and values, you know, I think it will, this, this debate is finally about human development. And this is what we have to keep in mind uh, as we keep moving forward. Uh, you know, CII uh, has uh, for a long time uh, been involved with energy efficiency in industry. And of course, we floated the Green Business Center, and green buildings has become something that uh, is gaining a lot of traction. But one project that CI has been involved in uh, has actually uh, grabbed a lot of uh, attention, but we haven't been able to make much progress in it. And this is a project known as SPEED. And this is about providing alternate energy you know, in rural areas. And the whole purpose of the SPEED project, which has been supported to a very large extent by the Rockefeller Foundation in the US, is really about a development in rural areas. And this is all to do with the telecommunications revolution that's taken place and the cell phone towers that we have. The cell phone companies, you know, uh, the tower companies, uh, are today running almost everything on diesel generators. And they realize the cost of that. Uh, so their interest is to get the cost down. Uh, the interest of uh, others like the Rockefeller has been to see how this uh, change in the whole perspective that is taking place in rural areas can actually be for rural development. So the project is very, very interesting. It is that you, you create renewable energy sources. It could be solar, it could be wind, it could be hybrid. It could be uh, rice husk in Bihar, as was mentioned. Uh, and you create uh, the anchor customer, which is the cell phone tower. But that should only be about 30% of the consumption. And the rest of it would actually go into the uh, villages to raise uh, development in villages. And the, the most interesting part, and where the Rockefeller is really interested in to do this as a global experiment, is to see how you can accelerate rural development and you have reliable power telecommunications together. And this means that you can then have telemedicine, you can have tele, you know, distance learning, uh, education. I mean, the whole, you know, you can completely change the, the trajectory of development if you can build this type of uh, project. So, of course, there are many challenges to this. I mean, nothing, none of this is going to happen uh, easily. But this is the, the real challenge. And I think that, uh, as the Secretary said, you know, off-grid solar has such a huge multiplier effect and potential uh, for development in India that it is something that, you know, we have to uh, find ways to promote uh, through policy and through uh, support. Uh, in, you know, as, as well as we possibly can. And I think that understanding uh, the policy issues around it, which is the purpose of today's uh, uh, seminar, is really going to make uh, a huge difference in, uh, in, in doing this. Uh, you know, one of the things that uh, the Shakti Foundation has done, amongst the other things, is that we've, we've, uh, uh, we did a, a report uh, along with Lawrence Berkeley Laboratory on the wind potential of India. And this is just much, much larger than was ever thought of. But the really interesting thing is going to be how 
hybrid system of wind and solar can make without any storage capacity. I mean, this is the, the crucial bit is without storage. You know, how can that, how can you really map out a hybrid system uh, throughout, whether it's grid connected or off-grid connected, which will make a difference uh, in, in the entire power scenario. So you've got to map that. You've got to map the consumption against it. You've got to make sure that, you know, whether it's a mini grid and off grid or whether it's on grid. And I think there are, there are lots of these type of ideas uh, floating around, which if you can really harness, uh, you know, we can make a, a, a giant uh, difference in uh, wind. And, uh, you know, I'm particularly pleased that Harish is here with us today because he's been the a uh, real pioneer in, in off-grid solar, and he's a member of our Shakti board. And, and we really are uh, very, very keen, uh, you know, to find the right solutions, uh, whether they are to do with financing or otherwise, uh, on how we can take this uh, whole issue forward. And so I'd be very keen to do it. You know, you mentioned about what can companies do. I mean, our company did a very small thing, which was to develop a small refrigerator called Chotokul. It's a tiny little refrigerator, it's only 30 liters. But the whole, it runs with, it doesn't use a compressor, it uses uh, thermoelectric chips. And that's something that is ideal to run on solar. And so actually, you know, you can, you can because I mean, one of, the, one of the issues on refrigeration in India is not just about personal refrigeration and having cold water and things like that, but it's really about the larger system of how the chain can make a difference in food preservation and and et cetera. And uh, so I think that you will find companies wanting to be interested in how they can contribute. I think my, my worry about whether a large company can really contribute in off-grid off is that, you know, it's, it's the, uh, because they are small systems, and of course it can be scaled up if you can get it right, but I doubt very much if small companies really have the ethos and uh, so I'm really, you know, will defer to Harish to see whether there is any role for large companies in this. But my gut feeling is that it would be rather difficult to, to get involved. Uh, but nonetheless, I'm sure that, uh, that, that this is an area which we need to understand better uh, and find the right solutions. And so I really look forward to what Harish has to say. Thank you.